Hey mambo, mambo italiano. Hey mambo, mambo italiano. Hey mambo, mambo italiano. Let's go a crazy for the sausage calabresi, which we don't have any of in this somewhat vegetarian. I mean, there's mozzarella cheese. Is mozzarella just because it's from dairy make it not vegetarian? I'm a meat eater, so no. Um, but boy, this is a simple, simple, vegetable rich, lots of tomato, uh, pasta that quite frankly is so easy to make. I make this, oh God, at least once every two weeks uh, during the summertime when it's hot and you want a cold dish, but not, there's not necessarily something that comes out of the refrigerator cold. You just want it like cool or slightly warm or something that can sit for a while. If you want to make a quadruple, quintuple version of that and put it on the buffet in your house for summertime entertaining, or pack it up as a lunch at the beach or anything like that. It is stupendous. And I can't believe that we've never taught this dish. Welcome everyone to AZ Cooks Instagram Live Edition. I've been away for a couple weeks making TV, can't talk about it, sorry, new show, but you'll be the first to know because trust me, I'll leak it about a week before they want me to probably to you guys. So anyway, thank you for allowing us to drop some taped stuff for you. That's just what we have to do when I'm away. And big thanks to our sponsors, the good folks at Shun Cutlery and Florida Kanye Rum, not only for supporting us, but for also just being super flexible with our content drop and stuff like that. Um, so I'm always looking for something super fast, super easy, one burner, stuff that I always have around and this dish is, it just fits the bill. And I have to be honest with you, uh, this last winter, I had a serious resentment against all of that baked feta and tomato sheet pan pasta dish BS that I saw. Here's the deal, I get it. It makes for really cool viral contact. But the fact of the matter is the whole thing you could technically do in about 10 minutes, if you did it under the broiler, charred the tomatoes, charred the feta, then dumped uncooked pasta into it along with a cup or two of water the way Melissa Clark did. If you sort of merge those concepts, then you would have something that's ready in 25 minutes instead of an hour and 15 minutes, and it would taste better too. And I thought to myself, I have a pasta that I make that's kind of like that. And I was like, well, it just hit me in the head. And I've been waiting for months to bring this to you because now it's summer. It's hot AF here in Minnesota. We've had 100 plus degree days. Power went out the other day in my house. Kind of crazy, kind of nuts. Um, so let's get right into it, uh, shall we? This is pasta. I like to use orecchietti. Some places call it... Uh, different names. It gets its name from small, look at this, dropped one, small little hats. That's what it gets its name from, small little hats. Tiny little, thank you, thank you, Vicky. Vicky is Spanish, so she loves complimenting me on my hat wear. Um, let's not cook that one, shall we? Um, I have rapidly boiling salted water. This is the kind of dish that you kind of like, Feel your way through. I'm putting in a few handfuls of pasta in here. I don't know, what is that? Maybe a quarter, somewhere between a quarter and a third of a pound. Um, this is made with uh, organic semolina pasta, and it is used, uh, it is, comes out of a machine that has brass dyes, and uh, the good stuff all comes from Gragnano in Italy, where you know, the, the flour and the bronze, sorry, the bronze dyes, uh, not brass, and all of the great traditional pasta making comes from. This is a supermarket brand that's fantastic, one of the most popular in America. You see in specialty stores, they carry really unique stuff like this. This is artisan made, I think it's got artichokes in it, but it's not made with brass dyes and it doesn't come from Graniano does it. So just be careful and read. There's no reason to pay $7,000 for this pound of pasta. This is basically as good as, 
the supermarket stuff. Sorry, apologize, don't show the brand. Um, but Rusticella d'Abruzzo is a great maker. Uh, Faella is a great maker. There are lots of great uh, pasta makers. More on that later. Next week, we're going to do a field trip, uh, not for AZ Cooks, uh, but for our YouTube channel, To My House. And I will show you the pasta collection that I create and where I buy my pasta from. So while that's cooking, let's just go through what we have on hand to make this dish. Take the top off of a whole tomato, if you have good ones in season, and dice them up. Use cherry tomatoes. They tend to have a lot of really good acidity. I've cut up a couple here. It took me about, I don't know, three minutes to do that. I had a piece of a shallot, a little red onion, white onion if you have it. Scallion is, eh, leek works. Um, it's just that the raw scallion flavor mixed with this isn't exactly the allium of choice for me. Uh, with this pasta. Um, it is with Asian pasta dishes. It is with a lot of other things that if you char them, it sort of takes it away. But scallions have a very specific amount of uh, caustic allium ammoniation that works well in some dishes and not in others. This becomes super, super sweet when it comes in contact with the heat. And I have a bunch of fresh basil. Um, you can use white pepper, ground, or black pepper or white pepper that you grind yourself. I use a mortar and pestle for this because it's so much faster to do it than it is to grind out two or three teaspoons. And I, I really encourage you with whole seed pastas, just give them a little quick toast in a pan just to get them warm, bring out those flavors in it, and then just grind it up. It trebles, whoa the flavor of that. A little bit of dried oregano, uh, mozzarella cheese. Here is a piece of bald mozzarella that we just pushed through. I mean, just pushed it through a box grater. You know, you don't have to like grate up and down. You can just push it through those big holes. We also have these tiny little uh, mozzarella pearls. Um, there are a lot of different brands in supermarkets that are selling this product. It's fun. They're great to scatter on salads, but what's really fun about them is that you can just throw them in whole or just cut them in half so they melt easier because the mozzarella cheese is gonna slightly melt, get a little bit soft. And why is it gonna do that? Because we're gonna pour a little bit of pasta water and the cooked pasta right on top of it. Oh, absolutely, but please dry your pasta first. This is not a dish because you toss it very aggressively. Um, fresh pasta like uh, pappardelle or fettuccine or something like that is going to break up. If you're going to use uh, pasta that you make by hand, and there are lots of great people who make fantastic pasta. Um, my friend Linda Nicholson, Salty Seattle, at Salty Seattle, you should follow her if you like pasta, um, makes this all the time on her feed, at least I've seen it, and it's literally, it's a, you make the dough and you just, one by one, it's just pushing your thumb on a board. That's all it is. It's so simple to make homemade orecchietti. Might be, I don't know, the simplest. Um, Linda does a lot of that kind of stuff. Joe Sasto, S-A-T-O, does a lot of that stuff. Um, pasta grannies. Uh, these are all Instagram accounts that I follow and just delight in the pasta dishes that they make. They really are um, head and shoulders above all the others. And they're very pasta focused, uh, right? Um, there are restaurants that specialize in pasta around the United States. Uh, Sarah Grunenberg's uh, Monteverde being one of them. So if you like pasta, follow Sarah and Monteverde. Um, I know Chicago is just reopening. By the way, restaurants all over America are reopening. Congratulations, restaurants. Way to fucking hang in there. And by the way, feed the whole gosh darn country while you're getting kneecapped. I love you, restaurants and restaurant people. Did you um, your water? I did. Um, I want to season the water till it tastes like seawater. You want it nice and salty. Because the pasta absorbs the salted water and it has more flavor within it, right? It's like rubbing the cavity of a chicken with salt and pepper before you roast it. It actually turns into a liquid in the steam, right? Because salt, right, in the roasting a chicken in the oven, that's 30% humidity in your oven, breaks down and the salt goes into the bird, right? 
All right, let's see what we got here. Now this is an organic handmade pasta. There's an old piece that I didn't catch before. So you wanna make sure to grab it at just the right point. Now, this dish gets tossed with the olive oil. And if you pour your water into a colander, you should collect some of the pasta water. You can always take a little bowl or cup and right before you drain it, just dip your cup in, right? You just, you can need a quarter cup, third of a cup, that's it. But the pasta water emulsifies with the olive oil and the juice from the tomatoes, right? So what we wanna do, we wanna put the hot pasta and the hot pasta water on top of the shit. Why am I swearing so much? You know why? Because I've been away from you for so long and I stomp around my own house just talking. I'm like Don Quixote, tilting at windmills and just swearing, sorry. I'm from New York. Um, we want the hot ingredients to wilt these room temperature ingredients so that the juices from those tomatoes and the shallots, and I'm gonna use a scooper here, right? This magic wand that cost me very little money uh, at one of our uh, Asian markets instead of the $75 it costs to buy the fancy pants version of it. And by the way, I've had this for I don't know, nine years, it's indestructible. I'm gonna scoop the pasta out and because these orecchietti are, they're like little hats, little bowls, they're gonna carry enough water in there to build my quarter of a cup, third of a cup. I've done this a lot. And I encourage you to buy something like this. It's so much easier than draining hot handles and you're gonna burn yourself and then boiling water and all the rest of that. I'm gonna use a healthy pinch of oregano because I love that cooked oregano flavor. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in because I've seasoned the pasta, but I haven't seasoned this stuff. I, I just, you know, in the recipe I called for white pepper. I'm gonna use a blend here. I'm gonna use some black. I'm gonna use some white. They both have much different flavors. Black pepper, the classic, Tillichery or Sarawak peppercorns have a much bolder, bigger flavor. And then I'm gonna put the pasta in. Now I've taken those little pearls and cut them in half and I grated a half a piece of mozzarella that I, fresh mozzarella that I had lying around and that's going to melt. And we're gonna to toss it and serve it. Uh, let's see, I just, I may need to get a bowl. That's what I may need. Do you ever save the pasta water for other sauces? No, because when I make pasta, I use the pasta water for the pasta sauce. I don't use enriched water to make other sauces. Um, I enrich other water with the same things that are used to make the pasta, right? Slurries with flour or cornstarch or tapioca starch or potato starch or rice flour, right? So. Why, why save something that I can make whenever I need? So we have another question. Please, fire away, that's why I'm here. Is this something that we can make ahead of time or should this be made and served right away? Oh, well, brilliant, don't know who asked that, but you're brilliant. Um, like I said at the top, this dish, you can literally make in your kitchen and bring right to the table. You can let it sit for an hour and then toss it and serve it. You can put it in your kid's lunchbox. If you refrigerate it and then serve it again, the melted mozzarella's tough, the oil congeals, the basil gets broken. You don't wanna do that. I have made this dish and then let it sit for an hour on the table waiting for everyone to get their butts into their seats. And all you gotta do is just give it a little toss with a couple spoons, it comes right back. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Uh, basil, I'm gonna take some of my basil and just tear it and let it wilt with the hot water and the cheese. So I'm gonna have one basil flavor in there. And then at the end, I'm gonna tear some fresh basil on top. Could you add some spinach? Uh, sure you could. You know, you could add a lot of different things to it. I think. Part of what makes this dish really special to me is it's tomato, pasta, olive oil, basil. 
Yes, it's got oregano, salt and pepper and a little bit of shallot, but it's, it's essentially about those flavors. If you wanted to do a version of this with spinach, I'd put handfuls of spinach in, maybe a little bit of feta cheese, maybe tilt it in a different direction flavor-wise, some grated lemon zest. Does that make sense? Because you can do a lot of things here, it's just maybe you'd want to take them in a different direction. Someone really wants to know how they can get your tan, because you look very tan. Oh my god, I was in, well I can't say where I was. By the way, for those that are just joining us now, thank you. Um, I am just taking the pasta out of here and letting whatever water clings to this, cling to it. And I know I need just a little more. So I'm just going to pour another quarter cup. And we toss. One of the things that I like about this is the volume of ingredients that aren't pasta to pasta are one to one. So here I've made three or four portions and you could see the pasta melting in that, yet the temperature of this dish is not that great. You know, the temperature of this dish is probably only about 90 degrees right now. And what I want to do with it, I just want to tear some fresh pasta onto there. Um, I love making sure to take a little tiny leaf and making sure that you have some of that. And then the really fun, well, I think it's fun, is just take some pasta curls. Parmesan curls? Oh yeah, sorry, thank you. <laughs> Madeline, is in, Madeline is in charge of me when I brain fart stuff. <laughs> um, and just put some of those. Now, why do I not crumble these? Well, the reason that I don't crumble them is that I think when your guests are eating, it's fun for them to sort of break it up and take as much parm as they want with a given dish, right? I'm just going to tear the rest of my basil and put it in there. You can't have enough basil if in a dish like this. Protein, um, I would probably uh, put some uh, pieces of poached or grilled shrimp on top of it. And the reason that I say that is that you know, grilled chicken and other things all have their day in the sun. Um, I just think it's nice to do something a little different. And I'm always looking to incorporate fish and seafood, and I think shrimp would be nice in there. Any lemon or acid to finish? Well, I'm using uh, fresh cut tomatoes that have a lot of acidity in them. If you want to put a splash of vinegar, it's going to be a hugely dominant flavor, right? If you are going to do anything, maybe a little lemon zest or grapefruit zest, but I would tell you, taste this my way first because the tomatoes are going to add so much. You have to remember, there's as much tomato in there as there is pasta, and they wilt in a little bit of that hot water just enough so that the Shallots soften, the tomatoes soften, but they don't burst or bust. The mozzarella melts and goes into that holes. The sauce, the sauce here is just emulsified olive oil and pasta water. We have a question for Madeline. Mm. <laughs> Madeline, how does this taste the day after? Still good the next day? <laughs> oh my God, I know who that's from. They don't trust you, Andrew. Someone else who works in our office. Nope. <laughs> they want to know if there's someone going to be left over the next day. Um, here's the deal. If I have leftovers of this, of course I say that. I don't throw it out. It's just not as great the next day. Where can we find the full recipe? A little piece of me just died inside. All the recipes are... Free to all, no paywall at andrewzimmern.com. Everything we do. What's your favorite pasta in Minneapolis? My favorite pasta in Minneapolis? Oh my gosh. Um, I know I'm like a one-trick pony. Um, I love, 
there are a lot of restaurants that do some really great stuff. Um, what is, uh, what is uh, Nancy and her husband's, the um, right down from 212? Bar La Grassa does a great job with uh, pasta. Um, the, uh, the Jester concept uh, restaurant that's in the basement of the, um, that hotel, Manello, thank you. Um, Madeline spends more time here than I do. <laughs> um, but I gotta tell you, the one place that makes all their pasta from scratch, and it, they only have four on the menu, but are just, just impressively good. I just ate there a couple weeks ago and had pasta uh, with my kid, is Spoon and Stable. Um, they started a pasta program there about four years ago, and Chris Nye, the, the executive chef there, and the director of all the culinary at, at Gavin's company, uh, they make everything from scratch on bronze dyed machines and it is spectacular and they use heirloom uh, wheat varietals that are grown here in Minnesota. It's a really special pasta program. If you weren't a chef, what would you be? Mm. I would be, if I wasn't a chef, I would be an intergalactic space policeman, the world's greatest all-around athlete, or an art history teacher. Pick any. How did you end up in Minnesota? Uh, I drank. <coughs> I drank my way here. It's an old. It's an old story. Long story. Just Google it. Uh, what cheese do you like using for pasta dishes in general? Oh my gosh. Um, Great question. Um, I keep Reggiano Parm and two kinds of Pecorino in my house at all times, and feta cheese as well. I happen to like feta cheese uh, with certain kinds of pasta because it's very, very, very acidic. Um, I have two Pecorino cheeses. Uh, one is a little harder and saltier than the other. Um, and of course, Reggiano Parm. That does not mean I don't use ricotta and mozzarella and other things in certain baked pastas or I, I make a killer. If you want a really fun pasta, it's not so great in the summertime, but come fall, start making my uh, pasta quattro formaggi, uh, which is fantastic, that has uh, taleggio and goat cheese and all kinds of wonderful cheeses in it. So it's not that lots of cheeses don't go with pasta, it's just that certain cheeses go better than others. Now this being said, it's a big, big trend these days to serve charcuterie and cheese platter to your buddies or have it wait. It's an easy first course to have in your patio or wherever. And my experience is that at parties that I throw, there's like these ends of four different cheeses that get left on the board. And there's always one, one cheese that no one likes and they just leave it there. It's just sitting there. It's usually the one that I like the most that's really strong and really stinky. And I just take those and I put them into a little cream in a saucepan and I take my immersion wand and I go with a little bit of salt and pepper and I put that over anything. It's a very adult sort of mac and cheese thing to do. Is a chunk of parm better than the parm already shredded? Yes. I, I like to roast my chickens with bones on them. I like to cook my chops with bones on them. I like to buy my cheese in chunks. I, the less handling, the better. It, everyone's supermarket, there's a section in the vegetable area where they have these pre-diced containers of celery, carrot, and onion. I get it, people are time poor. But come on, if you love to cook, sit there and cut an onion, cut some celery, cut some carrot. That's my yoga. That's that's how I interact with the food. That's how I calm myself down at the end of the day. I'm not in a, in, in a speed race to like huck everything together. Plus, the stuff that someone else is chopping and dicing, is, it's like the difference between mincing your own anchovies and using anchovy paste from a tube. I mean, I, have ancho I don't have anchovies in little tins. I have whole fish in jars with heads and bones salted that I buy at gustiamo.com, shameless plug, that's where I buy a lot of my stuff, and I desalinate them for hour and a half, hour 45, and then peel the fillets off the center bones for my anchovies. So I know I'm the extreme end of that equation, but don't use something that's already pre-chopped and pre-ground and all the rest of that kind of stuff. What kind of knife set do you have? Um, 
Well, I have a collection of about 200. My, my favorite brand that's available uh, commercially are the Shun. I have four or five different sets, the, the blonde ones, these ones here. I have some arcane ones that they've made years ago that I'm still dying to get more of. Hint, hint, Matt. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I have a lot, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of like a, a guitar player who has 200 guitars. I have 200 knives. Uh, we will show people, actually it's a great thing to do when we go to my house, we'll show you my knife drawer. I have like the 40 or 50 that I like to work with at home. They're all made by incredible makers from, you know, Bob Kramer to Don Carter and everyone in between. I, to me, knives are works of art and I absolutely love them. Bobby Flay says, I need that apron. Who does? Bobby Flay. Oh, Bobby. You have one of these. I know you do, because I know Ellen sent it to you. Uh, do you know, we always get comments about the aprons. And I'll tell you what's really funny. Uh, this was a promotional apron that Ellen's uh, latest, uh, her only book, her new book that dropped a month ago. She sent it out to a whole bunch of people, but I'm sure they sell it at HeadleyBennett.com. But every time I wear a different Headley Bennett apron, we get lots of uh, comments. It looks super sexy in shorts. What's your opinion about whole grain pasta? Uh, delicious. It varies from type to type. It's like whole grain bread. Some people do it well. Some people don't do it well. What's your favorite pasta dish to cook for your family? Oh my God. At this time of year, it's something very, very delicate like angel hair with lots of seafood. Clams, mussels, shrimp. I love making a version of cipino and putting it over a, with just a little bit of angel hair because if I don't, I eat an entire loaf of bread with the sauce what is or the broth. Difference? What is the difference between fresh and dry pasta? Many pastas are made fresh, especially the flat ones and then dried. Think linguine. All pasta at some point is fresh because the dough comes out of either an extruder or it's worked on a different machine. Katara, the square edge, is put on a uh, something that looks like a fretboard with 20 different wire strings and you roll the pieces through. Strozza pretti and other shape pastas we actually use dowels for. Um, the uh, orichettis, you, you, your thumb works them on a board. Um, there's so many, so many different shapes. At one point, all pasta is fresh. Some react better in the pot and on the plate when you let it dry. Think spaghetti. Think, to my taste, fettuccine, catara, things like that. Other ones have to be dried, like rigatoni or, or penne or ziti and things like that, uh, hollow filled shapes that have to dry because otherwise if you put them in and they cook, they just kind of collapse on each other and can stick together. How's your puppy? Uh, follow him at uh, Luca the Legato. I had to, by the way, I don't need any more reminders. I know in his, his Instagram, uh, I <laughs> spelled it with two O's and not an A or three O's and not an A. And the reason is that there's someone in Nebraska who already had Luca the Legato spelled the correct way. So I wasn't gonna change it. I just thought it'd be fun to sort of misspell it. But in my IG bio, you can check the, um, uh, there's a link to uh, his page. He's super cute. He's eight months, he's doubled in size. And yesterday he chewed up two pairs of my sneakers. Everything has to be protected from him. But we, I mean, <laughs> everyone thinks Vicky, I, we think he's great. I came in tonight to do this and Vicky didn't even look up from her work. The only thing she wanted to know from me was when is Luca coming to visit again? I did ask that. You did yeah. ask that. Yep. Everyone loves him. Have you ever tried cooking sea cucumbers? Oh gosh, yes. You have to cook them for a long time uh, to make them tender or super, super fresh, shaved paper, paper thin, and then macerate them with an acid, uh, like vinegar <laughs> or a brine of some kind, and they'll eventually pickle and become tender. Lobster roll, hot or cold? Both, and I'm not, I'm not joking. So here's what I do. My dads used to live in Portland, Maine, and that's where they both, uh, at the end of their lives, they both died there. Um, but I would eat three lobster rolls over the course of three and a half hours. You'd start, you'd drive out of town, and I'd stop at Days, 
and I'd have a lobster roll. Uh, then I'd drive a little further north, and I'd stop at Five Islands Lobster Company, and I'd have another lobster roll. That one was made with just a whisper of mayonnaise and celery. Then I'd drive further north to Wiscasset, and I'd go to Red's. At Red's, it's hot butter poured over an entire lobster, chopped and put into a bun. And then we drive all the way back, lie, I would have four lobster rolls. And then I stop at Eventide, and I would have their tiny little lobster rolls with brown butter on them served on tiny little loaves of steamed bread. Oh my god. That, that is a day of eating. And yes, I can keep eating. I could do it again the second day if you twisted my arm. So we got a couple of comments about our YouTube videos. Someone said yep. that they loved the hot sauce video. Very funny. It, it was funny. I think I may have revealed too much. And then another one said, love the gooey duck videos. Uh, yes, who doesn't? Any kind of penis-shaped thing that I take a knife to, everyone is going to love. Who doesn't love that, right? I mean, come on. Gooey duck. Here's the thing. I wish gooey duck looked different because it really is the most delicious, sweetest, most incredible clam and it happens to look like a giant penis and it even spurts seawater when you try to clean it. So, I mean, we can't, there's nothing that we can do about that. All we can do is apologize to our sponsors for putting up with us. So, Shun and Florida Kanya, thank you for putting up with us and continuing to support us despite uh, the lead dog's uh, juvenile uh, behavior. I suffer from infantilism. People often ask me, if they've been here long enough like Madeline has and they're talking to me, they want to know, are they talking to the nine-year-old me or the 13-year-old me? Because it's very rare that the 59-year-old me actually shows up to work. I tend to leave him at home. Uh, thank you so much for uh, checking in with us today. I know your time is valuable. We love cooking with you. Thank you to everyone who tuned in. We will be live again next week as well. Go to andrewzimmern.com and check this out. Uh, do we have anything else going on of major importance this week before next Thursday I need to remind people about? They, they should check our YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. If you're not subscribing to our YouTube channel, you certainly should. We put a lot of different stuff up there. We post three times a week. A lot of stuff from the archives, a lot of crazy, stupid junk. Uh, that we just make and put up there, but people find endlessly entertaining. We're going out and shooting brand new content for you guys and putting it up on YouTube, so please uh, do that. Second thing, uh, we are starting to near a million uh, users, uh, viewers, fans on Instagram. Um, tell your friends who don't follow us just to give us a follow. Put us over the one million mark. Uh, that would, Vicky gets bonused if we go over a million people uh, by the end of June. Vicky, shh, hey, I'm making that up. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, uh, much thanks to all of you, obviously, uh, to Vicky and Madeline for making this possible and everyone else in our office who puts up with uh, our shenanigans. Make this pasta. Room temperature, super easy. Dress it up for a crowd. Serve it individually. It's just yummy, fresh, taste of the garden. It tastes of summer, and on a hot night, lukewarm or cool food is best. This really hits it out of the park. Thank you, thank you, thank you.